Hey guys, uh, and welcome to, what is this, night three of Son of Liberty Radio on Scope. Um, we're uh, we're sort of excited. We we have a, we have a, amazing people tonight. We have amazing people. Uh, so uh, normally, you know, we just, it's me and Kevin shooting the breeze, but we have uh, Kevin, we have Ignacio Oliva, and I'm probably saying his name wrong, Jeffrey Zamora, and H is supposed to be in here somewhere, but, uh, you know, he's probably... Uh, he's on that Thailand internet, so it, it, may, uh, it may be problematic. So, uh, uh, Jeffrey, you're in Costa Rica. What's the name of your organization in Costa Rica? Azuape Costa Rica. And and uh, Ignacio is in Chile, and he's Asovape Chile. Yep. And I said that wrong. I said that American Chile. It's Chile. <laughs> <laughs> Chili is the meat with the. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, hey, you know we did a we've been doing a show every night on here, uh, same same time every night. Uh, and last night, after our our little show last night, we did a show talking about nicotine and neurodiversity. They were playing a a replay of uh, David Sweener uh, TED Talk, and he was talking about uh, slaying dragons. And uh, during his TED Talk, uh, YouTube decided that uh, our, our stream violated their community standards and they took the stream down. Um, we were frantically in, you, you know, you guys are all in the, the WhatsApp. We were, why are we, why are we, what, what, what did we do wrong? And, uh, you know, it was, it was kind of depressing to me that, uh, you know, all it takes is one person one person to complain and uh, ruins all the fun for everybody else. There's H. So. <laughs> Hi, Jeff. So, Kevin. Uh, here, Hello. you know, the, the whole purpose, the whole purpose of what, what we've been doing a little bit on my show is introducing American audiences to international advocates. Um, and we've We've crossed a, a, a good bit of the globe, but I feel really sad because the only Central South American, Latin American uh, guest that we've, we've been able to get on was Jeffrey, and that was because he called in one of our uh, audience participation shows. I feel really bad because you guys are our neighbors. Um, yeah, shame but, on you, so, Patrick. I know I'm a horrible human being, yeah. but I'm so glad to get Ignacio in, and I really would love to get some of our other brothers and sisters from Central and South America in. Bring them on. In America, uh, sort of, you know, American vapors have the blinders on, and we only only see what's right in front of us, um, and we sort of forget that this is an international fight. This is all over the globe. And uh, over the time that we've been bringing in an international guests, we've asked them their quit stories. And who would have thought that their quit stories were identical to our quit stories? You know, maybe in a different language, but the struggles, uh, you know, what didn't work, what does work, you know, all that stuff is identical to our stories. So a, a lot of people have, you know, kind of opened their eyes to the fact that everybody should be standing together. So thank you for coming. Uh, it's a long intro, but, you know, I get wordy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we've already... For you. We've Thanks already... Thank you for the invitation. Oh, um, yeah. Actually, in Latin, we are quite organized. We mm -hmm. have... Uh, as you said, uh, my association and Jeff's association have the same name, and it has um, a lot to do that we are very organized and we want to tow that way the things. We also have ARDT, that is the Ibero-American Agrupations of Associations, and if I'm not wrong, we are 14 countries now. We have yep. Argentina, Chile, Brazil, uh, Colombia, Mexico, Spain, Portugal, Costa Rica, Puerto Rico, Venezuela, uh, 
I, I don't know which ones I didn't name, but we are very well connected. And actually, we are talking every single day of our life. We are totally connected. And that also have helped, helped us to be aware of what's going on in the world. I think it, in this pipe, it's so important to know what's happening in other countries because what happened today in my country it will it could happen tomorrow in yours uh because as you said this is totally a global fight that was one of the mistakes i have been advocating for vaping 10 years now and at the beginning i was fighting alone in my country not knowing what was going on in the other places and it's kind it feels kind of it feels kind of lonely but also it doesn't let you see the trees because you you can see the forest because of your own tree but there is a lot to do to learn uh from what's going on and to be prepared for the next uh hit that we'll receive from bloomberg and his tendrils fun fact about the um, organization consumer organizations in latin america is that most of them are uh, first name um, as a vape. As a vape Argentina, as a vape Chile, as a vape Paraguay, as a vape Peru. That kind of shows how how organized things are when it comes to Latin America and you know, kind of the focus that we have and the the path that we go through. We really kind of work conjunctionally to try to fight for the same things. And like Patrick said. Um, you know, it may be some difference when it comes to each country, but at the end, uh, we face kind of the same struggles, even the same enemy, pretty much, at yeah. the end. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the, it's a fun fact that we have organized things so much that even the same, uh, that it, the, uh, the name is the same, which actually derives from the first organization in Latin America that is Absolute Colombia. That was uh, the first one to be created, and we can we kind of follow along. Well, I mean, you know, um, I uh, I saw a video on YouTube, and um, I, I why is Kevin? Why is that company? Why is that video channel's name blanking out in my head? Who is it? The. The, the the YouTube videos, the vape advocacy videos. What's the guy's name? Wait, like Brett Stafford? No, I would never I would never talk about Brett Stafford. No, the, the one that went to Central and South America and did the amazing videos. Oh uh. this is horrible. It's it's Aaron's buddy. Oh, el mono vapeador. Vida News. Vida oh, News. Vida News. Yeah. Ah, Vida News is not from South America. Vida no, no, News is but from they... North America, but they made yes. a video when we create a ARDT uh, yes. in Medellin, where we were there. I'm actually in that video. I don't like yeah. it much because I cried. I'm the cry <laughs> of the group. <laughs> there's, no, there's nothing wrong with but that. Being emotional is okay. <laughs> Actually, yeah, yeah. if you like that video, I should um, tell you to see another documentary that it's called Behind the Clouds. Behind the Cloud. Uh, if you haven't seen it, you should. And if you don't want to search for it, you can wait until tomorrow at uh, 5 a.m. Hong Kong time. I'm not sure what's that time at your site. Um, we will release the third chapter of that um, of that documentary. So we are showing that documentary tomorrow via scope uh, in the same moment that it, the third chapter is released. And it shows a lot of what's going on in Latin America. It shows what advocacy is doing. Uh, it's divided in three chapters. The first one is like an introduction. The second one, it's about uh, the reasons why we're fighting for and who are behind this fight. And the third one is a surprise and you will see it tomorrow. Cool. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, this whole idea of um, scope, of uh, bringing uh, advocates from around the globe uh, to to be to share the screen together, to to uh, converse and to educate and inform the consumers that um, that really aren't uh, as in touch with what's going on in their own home, let alone in other countries uh, scope this i i think we should do this every every six months i don't know that we should wait every year or every two years when cop is is going to ignore us and not let us in um i think it's a great opportunity um plus we've built hours and hours and hours of amazing content that we can use year round um but ignacio we jumped the gun um kind of uh you know Tell everybody your your vape story. Um, you said you've been doing this for ten years, so you've been vaping as long as me. And uh, you know, I can remember what we had ten years ago, and what we have now is completely uh, different. So, yeah, yeah, it was difficult to start in that uh, in that times. So I have been vaping for eleven years and a half now, uh, and I started Bogacy, uh on twenty ten. Uh, when the Minister of Health of Chile tried to ban uh, the e-cigarettes in Chile, it was the same moment where uh, that's what we were talking about, that it's so needed to know what's going on around the world, because in that moment I was not aware that they were trying to do the same in the rest of Latin America and some other countries. In that moment, Argentina, Brazil, Uruguay, another, I don't remember if other country of Latin America got into the ban of totally prohibition of e-cigarettes and in Chile they were trying to do the same. So I just stand up. In that moment, we were very, very little amount of uh, people that bay. But we make a very big campaign. It was different in that moment, internet, Facebook and that kind of stuff. Uh, doesn't have the didn't have the um, the power that it have today, but in the real medias or in the formal medias we were able to fight back, uh, fighting against the minister, telling him liar, and we were able to stop the 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 project of law to go into the senator chamber. Um, and that was a win, but we knew that in some moment he will came back and he came back 10 years uh, later. So we stand back again. I started in advocacy, that's the reason, but I have some further um, motivation for that. In some years ago, my sister uh, got a very big cancer. She was very, very ill. She had to go through two processes of chemotherapy and radiotherapy. We, we, we saw her dying. Actually, she was very close to die. Uh, and for the family, it was a very bad thing. It's very difficult to understand how bad it for the family to have someone with cancer. The cancer that my sister had was not related to tobacco, but it's still a cancer. And it, if it's there, something that uh, create cancer in the people, it's uh, smoking. Uh, my sister was fighting for two years against it. And when she started the process of remission, that it's the, pro the process that you are out of the cancer and then you start the process to know that it's not coming back. One week later, they found cancer on me. And the most difficult moment of my life was to tell my mom that I got cancer. And it was not because I was uh, afraid or or feeling something about me or nothing like that. It was the so hard stuff to tell the family that this nightmare could start again with another member of the family. Um, I will do whatever it's in my hand to save families. 
a lot of times it's the smoker who is put like, oh, he smoked, he asked for it. But they forget first, I'm totally in disagree with that position, but in the other hand, they forget that behind that smoker, there is a whole family that is suffering even more than him. Families that not all only will see someone to cross a very bad uh, illness, they also will die. And that's kids, when they talk about the kids, oh, the kids, the kids, the, the thing that OMS is using like a weapon. What about the kids without dads, without moms, without brothers? Uh, it's kind of super illogical. We know that all the things that they talk, it have no sense. But this one, especially, it's like, oh, they can die. Let's focus on the kids. It's it's uh, so actually that's why I'm so close to advocacy and as I said I will do whatever it's needed or whatever it's in my hands to give the fight until the last moment. Again, I mean you what you said. I've had I had a family member uh, who suffered. Um, I saw their struggle and made a decision in my life. Um, as powerful as that is, there are millions of us that have very similar stories. And uh, to watch somebody uh, laying in bed, uh, gasping for air, it's the it's one of the most heart wrenching things I've ever had to deal with. Um, but Jeffrey, um, tell a little, you know, get a little bit of, the back, of your background in here too. Yeah, sure. Um, well, I started vaping uh, six and a half, seven years ago, the most, I think. Um, <clears throat> I quit smoking by accident. I didn't intend to. It was not my plan. Uh, I, bo I bought a vaping device just to smoke less, but I didn't want to quit smoking, to be honest. I even carried around a pack of cigarettes in the car for a few months because I thought that at one time I you know, wanted to smoke and I didn't have any regret, to be honest. Um, and at that time, actually, it, it came to a point that I, I didn't. So I just gave, uh, the, I pretty much just throw the cigarettes to the garbage. Um, I'm one of those accidental quitters. I bought a pen, uh, a bait pen on a bait shop, bought a... It was a peach flavor e-liquid, and that did it for me. After that, um, I start vaping and I continue smoking a bit, but shortly I found that the Eagle uh, pen that I bought, Eagle battery pen, didn't work that, uh, that well, or the battery didn't last that long. So I bought a Cool Fire from Inican, and after that, never smoke again. <laughs> And that was with a coconut flavor as well. So, yeah, it was pretty easy for me. It, uh, it didn't took much or much of an effort to quit smoking. I had tried quit smoking in the past uh, multiple times. It didn't work. Even though that my parent suffered a heart attack and almost passed away uh, because of a three-pack that they have it, um, it didn't provoke me any desire to quit, even though the, the emotional trauma almost almost losing him, it got really deep into me. I think the the idea of smoking was even well, it was even uh, you know more into me that uh, the emotional trauma or something. So I didn't want to quit either. And after that, um, when I noticed that it worked so well for me, that it was so easy to quit. I start speaking about it. Uh, shortly after that, I began um, with a new liquid company. I made some. I start mixing stuff, and I began with a new liquid company that is called that it was called Vaporate, and um, it was running for a you know for a, some time. At the end, pretty much, I just closed the company and uh, just dedicated to advocacy, to consumer advocacy. Um, I started with another organization that is for Costa Rica, that is for 
that is kind of a mix between consumer and industry, but got to a, a few differences with them, you know, about what they wanted to do. So I started as a way Costa Rica with the help of Francisco, Ignacio, Angeles, and pretty much all the people from Latin America. Um, and after that, um, well, I also worked with Inco as well. So yeah, it's been a great ride. I think that it started pretty organically. I even think that advocacy chose me, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, it was, you know, like I said, things happen for some reason. And when you didn't put, put that much effort and it just happened, this passion to help people and the idea of helping so many lives, so, you know, to save so many lives. And now with an even bigger uh, mission, that is kind of getting to a billion people um, as soon as possible to eradicate smoke. And I do think that we can get really close to that. Obviously, a lot of people will not want to smoke at the end, uh, stop smoking at the end. But uh, I think that we uh, tobacco harm reduction, it is the key that it will be, you know, in the sum up with some other alternative uh, nicotine products will pretty much just wipe out smoking out of the planet, you know, in a few years. <laughs> I mean, I, uh, I, I would never, ever denigrate, attack, diminish um, anything, anything that helps somebody quit smoking. You know, uh, if, if somebody likes nicotine pouches, great. If they yeah. like snooze, great. If they like heat, not burn, and it helps them quit smoking, great somebody just made me really big um so the uh the idea that that one thing is better than another to get somebody off of combustible cigarettes is uh is it, it's embarrassing and then we have people uh who have billions of dollars uh who like to go and spend money to enforce their will on other people yeah um <laughs> And it's very successful in, uh, you know, LMICs, you know, that, that's like, the, that's the new, that's the new popular phrase, LMICs, low to, low to middle or low and middle um, income communities or countries. Um, and, and Bloomberg, I'm going to say his name, Bloomberg uh, ha, has you made it his life's mission to go around from country to country throw some money around and and enforce his will. Um, he goes to the WHO and says, America is backing out of the WHO. Here's a check for $700 million. That's the amount of money that the uh, US is pulling away from you. Don't worry about that. Um, oh, here's my agenda. Uh, goes to the Philippines and says, hey, I see you guys need some money. Here's some money. Here's some model legislation I'd like you to pass. Um, oh, guess what? Uh, Marawa, wh who's coming on after us. Marawa uh, was on my show a few months ago, and she's talking about going to a conference in the Philippines, and they hand her a proposed bill. And she starts looking at it, and she says it's almost verbatim the same legislation that has been introduced in New Zealand. Now, you don't think that that happens organically, do you? Actually, in Mexico, there was a very huge scandal because uh, in the um, parliament, in the health parliament, in the health commission of the parliament, the head of, the, of that commission was not letting pass the um, laws pro-vaping and in some moment she present one very bad uh, law against vaping but they make a little mistake they didn't erase the metadata of the archive and it was written down by an argentinian girl that worked for bloomberg the <laughs> tobacco free kids it was I a very huge this. scandal it was a very huge scandal and she was accused of corruption and letting outsiders to came into politics and she dropped down the the project and the projects that were stopped uh 
were able to go through. Anyway, now Mexico is having a huge problem there because they have uh, Bloomberg really, really deep in the government. Um, but yes, there, for some time we were treated as conspiracy people when we were talking about Bloomberg. Even in my program, we have a very big campaign that it starts in Chile, but now goes to all Latin America that it's called vaping, it's not smoking. Uh, we have been doing different stuff. We were the first to do a public manifestation. And even the people that look at our program tell us, stop with this thing of Bloomberg. You look like crazy, conspiracy. And we were like, this is not, you just need to hear us. But now there is a lot, lot, lot of, uh, well, actually the last, uh, the last uh, report of who it's signed by him. It's like, are you really that kind of people? You don't have, uh, you have to, you need to have a lot of guts to do something like that. Yes, I pay for it. I'm here and I signed it and oh my God, but, well, uh, someone in the chat was saying, we know the truth and in some moment it will came uh, for everyone. That was Bloomberg too. For us, it was so clear, so, so easy to see it. And now no one can say that he's not in the back. And I think in some moment, that's my, that's what I think, that in some moment the science we will prevail and the the big question is when it's have been 10 years let's hope we don't need to wait 10 years more so um uh you know i know and kevin knows and we know that h knows no. he knows because we know because h knows uh that maybe, you know, maybe h, I think can h, h should tell us some of the things that he does know he knows everything. I, I wanted to know, H, if you could tell me or not, if you found any stunning, earth-shattering, innovative tobacco harm reduction developments from COP9 yet this week, so far. <laughs> uh, nobody's found out anything, really, because they don't say anything um, other than nothing. So, uh, no, I, no, there's no earth-shattering news. I, I suppose we, we, we could say that uh, they apparently have decided officially uh, that they're not going to discuss harm reduced products less harm oh. marketing products for two more that's years that's what they're going to hold that for two more years now i, I just want to make a couple of points here before you interrupt me patrick because i know you desperately want to so <laughs> so here, here's the thing first of all on the surface it's oh great they're not going to discuss harm reduced products for two years great so that gives us a window of opportunity possibly but think about this they're putting papers in but not discussing them so only the papers that justify their untenable position are going to be accepted we know this those papers will be put on record as we have received these papers that says vaping is terribly bad but well, we're not going to discuss it but it says vaping is terribly bad but we're not going to discuss it we won't it because vaping is very bad but but we're not going to discuss it now so what's going to happen is you've got all these governments around the world who are already in bloomberg's pocket who are already in who's pocket who are already in sctc's pocket and i mean literally in their pockets um who are pressing their regulators who don't understand the science can't really don't have the time to sit through the huge amount of data uh, whatever so they're just li listening to trusted advisors who are all in the pocket of bloomberg uh and gates and who and big farmer or whatever so they're going to say oh, okay well they're not going to discuss for two years but we've got to do something now because we're being pressed let's just pass this regulation that's really inappropriate and we all know once you've passed a regulation it's really difficult to roll it back or, or change it so i think the strategy here is we can't discuss the science because if we ever get into a situation where we've got to justify why we're taking this over this other wealth of evidence which denies it um we're going to lose that's why they won't talk to us because they know they can only attack us on funding on on anything spurious but not actually engage with us on the evidence because they lose immediately 
So they're doing everything they can to avoid that. So by not talking about it, they've bought themselves another two years to influence countries who are willing to be influenced um, to pass laws, which in two years' time might say, oh, perhaps there's a bit more to it than what we said, but it's too late because in that two years, more countries will have passed restrictive regulations. So uh, that's what I can see is happening at COP9. On the plus side, the Philippines got a dirty ashtray award. Yeah, they got it because they demanded transparency, uh, 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 looking at the science and actually having a full um, debate where we actually have a democratic process. FCTC did not like the fact that they had to be transparent, that they had to look at the science and they had to be democratic. So they awarded the Philippines a dirty ashtray. Well, bless you, the Philippines. Well done. This is, a, this, is, this is it. More countries need to listen to this. More countries need to stop listening to Iran, to India, and to Thailand, who uh, all have uh, state tobacco industries and are calling the shots very much, getting awards like India, being told what a wonderful job they're doing when they're killing people with their policies. Um, so, yeah, sorry, I'm ranting. Uh, I'd just like to move on since we were talking about Bloomberg. Um, <clears throat> I, I don't want to talk in this, uh, at this about the money that he's giving to individual countries, to individual departments of health, to individual academ academics, to, to, to associations. But I just want to talk about FCTC and Bloomberg. Not Big Pharma, because they throw money at it too. Not Gates, because he does. Just Bloomberg. In 2012, Bloomberg committed and has been paying over one billion US dollars to billion. the FCTC. One billion, and, and that's a staggering wow. number. So I want to break those numbers down for you, okay? One billion dollars since 2012 up to the end of 2000 and let, let's say 2000 and this year, let's say 2021, okay? Works out at $3.53 per second. Now, we've been talking for 25 minutes here. Uh, so let me just do 25 times 60 times 3.53 equals that since we've been talking, Bloomberg has paid the SCTC $52,950 since we've been talking. Okay. Uh, that, that's $2,118 a minute. That's $304,992 per day. That's, I can't read this, 21,000, no, 2,000,000, no, I can't read that, I'll have to go somewhere else. Uh, oh, hold, hold on while I open up my Excel file because I, unlike everybody else, I can't actually read my own writing. It's a sign of being really super intelligent, apparently, but uh, possibly not. Oh, yeah, here we go. Uh, every week, it's $2,134,944,000. To put that in perspective, throughout the duration of five days of COP, Bloomberg will have paid $1,524,960 to FCTC. That's $111,093,350. Point two dollars every single year. That, yes, exactly. Thank you, Kevin's granddaughter. That's spot on. That's, that's yeah. and sons. Yeah. Oh, sons. Beg your pardon. Yeah. So th this is this is the depth of the problem. This is just Bloomberg and just FCTC. Not anything else. Just Bloomberg. Just FCTC. Three dollars and fifty three cents a second. You can so, probably at least double that because you've got Big Pharma, Gates, Soros, all the rest of them throwing the money in as well. Yes. Okay, Patrick, so, please go ahead. It's your show. So, it's my show. <laughs> that couldn't um, be a conflict of interest. No, no, no. So um, <laughs> about about three, four weeks ago, Kevin and I had on our show, He we had a, uh, a gentleman that was a candidate running for office in New York um, to take uh, the position of the lieutenant governor who had stepped up since uh, anti-vaping Cuomo got uh, fired or lost his job because he couldn't keep his hands to himself. Um, and we, we, we started oh, yeah, talking, yeah. we started talking about Bloomberg. We, we mentioned um, 
how much money Bloomberg spends globally to enforce his will. And he he just would not believe. He said, I know Bloomberg's finances. There's no way he could spend that kind of money. Blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, look, we have receipts. We, we can show you. It is such an ungodly amount of money that people resist acknowledging the truth of it. It is it is so profoundly gross, the amount of money. Because think about it. I mean, think about how many people could be fed on how much on, on the money that he throws away trying to perpetuate a lie. Uh, Patrick, I, th I think that, that's one way of looking at it. But imagine, just imagine, if instead of using his billion dollars at the SCTC to demonize vaping, imagine if he'd actually looked at the data, which is what he says he does, and, and, and not listened to the rubbish that, that the people who want his money um, uh, tell him, uh, smoke free kids, uh, for example. Um, if he had actually said, you know what, actually there's something going on with this vaping, flavors work, it's all good, and we're seeing reductions. If you look at the evidence, the evidence that we all know, they said, I'm going to put a billion dollars into getting smokers to switch to vaping, we wouldn't be having this discussion. He'd be a hero. Unfortunately, yes. the, way he, the way he does it is wrong, and from the U.S. anti-corruption thing, he's not right, because it doesn't matter if you invest your money in something that's such a good cause, but you're corrupting the government to do it, you're breaking the law in any country. So, so but, but, okay, because I don't want to ignore Jeffrey and Ignacio, but um, you're making you're making a wrong assumption. You're making the assumption that he wants to be the hero of the people. He doesn't want to be the hero of the people. He wants to be the hero of his circle, of yeah. the rich people. Yeah, that, that's the, what that, that, people that, that, in that, power. He doesn't care. I, said. I mean, if no, I if know. He tried to save the the people's lives. If he tried to spend his billions converting smokers to vaping or any other less harmful product, he would be the hero of the people. That's but what do I just you said. actually think he cares about the people? No, no, he's doing this for his no, own personal. I, 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 absolutely, I it's for himself. But no, but we have something history. important. Uh, uh, there is also something important what we forget about Bloomberg because someone's I have heard many times like oh but he's trying to do the good no he's not there is uh Jeff what's the name of the device that he having one of his companies that hail 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 so I have a hail hail even even in in that position it's not true because he's going after money if he is able to disappear the vaping he will get back his money well, he will the, be the, the only one able to see to sell hail and if you see the numbers of the industry of vaping around the world he's just making an investment so really, for me, Bloomberg have nothing of a good person in any kind of ways. And even trying to put it in that thing of being the hero in his group or under the people, he just don't fucking care. <laughs> we got a curse word out of Ignacio. <laughs> yeah, I, I did it in purpose. I, I hope Nancy don't kill me. But so, you know what? Yeah, about I, I wanna... <coughs> he does have a history of trying to limit people's freedoms. You know, as oh, yes, a major, yeah. he went oh, yeah. after a bunch of stuff, even the sugar, sugar, sugary sugar. sodas, right. sugar. The large sodas, um, Look, things like that. We but now, I, I want to be I want to be clear about the the hail. So the hail is a uh, is it is an it's made by it's it's made by Have a Health is the name of the company. Um, now, there's an organization called The Village, and The Village is a conglomeration of billionaires. Uh, Facebook, uh, Google, all the, the leaders of all these huge companies throw all of their money into a hat, and they have a plan organizer that goes around, and an, an angel invests into small companies um, to promote those products. Now, when we found out that Have a Health uh, the hail was under the village umbrella, um, and that includes Mark Zuckerberg. That includes um, 
well, it's a it's a huge, massive list of of power brokers and people in tech, uh, uh, you know, billionaires, just bill, you know. Um, we called it out because we went through, and I have a show, and we scanned their website and showed the faces of all of the people listed as their uh, members, the village members. Well, guess what? That explained the tattoo bone. That that's finally, what. That's guess what? The explanation of the tattoo ban in YouTube, oh, yeah. Facebook, yeah. Instagram. But, but, but after we pointed out that. that Bloomberg was a hypocrite, they took his picture down. His picture's not listed there anymore. So when you bring up Have a Health and you bring up Bloomberg and call him a hypocrite because he's invested in this vaping company, they just point out he's not on there anymore. He, he's not there. But you can find videos of him speaking at village conferences and talking about being a, a, a the, you know, the head of the village or a, on the board of the village or whatever. But on their website, his his presence has been expunged. And I'm pretty sure that Kevin have a screenshot while he was. Oh well, well, we have it on video because we did it on my show and it was still there. So, but it's gone now. Just a little thing. Just a little thing that works on this part of the conversation, and it also gets how important it's to look what's happening in other countries. You remember we were talking about the Argentinian girl that uh, made mm -hmm. the, um, the project of law for Mexico. The guy that present the, um, the parliament that present the project of law against vaping in Chile, it's called Senador Girardi. Once, some years ago, I interrupt a forum, a pre present forum, because now all is virtual, but at that moment was present. It was of some, uh, some organization, anti-tobacco, but also anti-vaping, that received money from Bloomberg. And in that forum, there were four people. One pseudo scientific, the girl from the institution or the organization in Chile, this deputy, this senator, and this Argentinian girl, the same one that made the project of law in Mexico. But now, why it's connected what we are talking about? Chile was the first country in the world that gets the law against sugar, the law of um, etiquetas. How do you say etiquetas, Jeff? Labels. The labels, the law of labels against, uh, against uh, sugar. Can you imagine who present that project of law? The same one. The same senator that presented the uh, project anti-vaping. And the third part of the agenda of Bloomberg, it's to attack alcohol. And he just presented, after presenting the project of law of sugar, of vaping, his next project was against alcohol. So it's so important to look forward what's happening in the other countries to understand this very big uh, ball of trash that mm -hmm. is hidden under the carpet. Well, well, in, well, here in Costa Rica, we have a project, well, a bill, project of law that is being pushed by the Bloomberg Front, uh, Bloomberg Front organization here that is funded by them. And actually the same attorney from Tobacco Free Kids, the one free is from Argentina, uh, is gonna come to pretty much talk about the project itself and why mm -hmm. it's important to have plain packaging over vaping products and all that crap. So, um, one of the things that we talk about on the show is is that that all of these countries and states here in the United States, they're dominoes. And when one domino tips, they all tip. And if you don't think that they're coordinating, we've watched here in the states, we've watched model legislation move from state to state to state. We already talked about model legislation in uh, Oceania, in, in, in the Philippines and in Australia. I can guarantee you the same things occurring down there in Central and South America. And, you know, somebody brought it up, Francisco brought it up in the chat room, uh, Vital Strategies, which is a, uh, a splinter. It, it, it's, a, it's a side project between Gates 
and Bloomberg and Vital Strategies is independent contractors. They go from country to country. You can look on their site and see their their partnerships, who they're partnering, and they partner with countries. And, not Tom, and Tom Fryden, former director, CDC, also former Bloomberg acolyte, is directly, I think he's the president, but I'm not sure, of Vital Strategies. So Bloomberg yeah. connections to that as well, yeah. And so not talking it, even about the union that is a major play yeah. from Bloomberg as well. Yeah. So all of these little – so Bloomberg doesn't use Bloomberg philanthropies for everything. They're coordinated from a central you know, thing, but all of these other little pocket companies are all – organizations are all going around writing checks. Here's a check. Uh, hey, you want, you want to partner with our organization, Vital Strategies, or the union is willing to do X, Y, or Z. All of these are puppets that he is manufacturing or that he's controlling so that, you know, he can enforce his will. And uh, that's the thing, is, 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 is him wanting to enforce his ideology on other people. Right. By the way, um, I don't know if you know, guys. Well, most probably you, you do because you're on top of everything. <laughs> but perhaps somebody in the audience don't know. But we had a protest, a prote a protest uh, in Bloomberg's uh, offices here in London uh, back on Tuesday, and Inco released a dossier, which kind of puts together a bunch of evidence um, to raise questions about the influence from um, Bloomberg philanthropies to the WHO. Mm -hmm. uh, it's on the Inco site on the website. So any, if anybody wants to look at it, it, it kind of puts a lot of information together. So it is worth reading. And, you know, uh, pretty much for journalists, I think that it can be uh, valuable too, right? See everything together because we know those things and we have known them for years. But perhaps to make it easier for journalists, for reporters, for even uh, legislators to see those stuff, you know, that stuff on one place um you know with the help of the safer nicotine's uh safe uh, safer nicotine wiki we put a, a bunch of information together and mm -hmm. release it so hopefully it gets to important yeah. reporters yeah. i i actually shared that on twitter this morning um i i threw the tweet up on on the share screen um awesome. so here's the thing you know i said in my tweet the legwork is already done inco did all the work for you uh, corruption at the WHO at in the uh, FCTC, uh, bankrolled by Michael Bloomberg through Bloomberg.org. So this is private money used to spread lies to the public to guide slash control government policy around the globe. So uh, I, I'm almost positive that every country in the world has a law that prevents outside people from interfering with internal politics. No. No. Don't I mean I, I'm I'm thinking that's one of the reasons why the Philippines is so angry, and and it, you know it's making such a big uh, wave or big ripples in the water over there is because this is a non-Filipino coming in and pushing the government to do what he wants. I mean, this Actually, is sovereignty. As far as, I, as far as I know, it's also uh, against the law in United States to try to go after uh, the other government. So See, even if he is attacking a government that don't have the law, he's still doing corruption and going against the law. Michael well, we know Bloomberg, it is. Michael we, we, Bloomberg should be in prison for attacking the countries that have low income, even harder than the other countries. Even on that, he's a fucking racist because he had different plans for us that we are the monkeys from Latin America that we can't choose because we are so stupid, so uh, low kind of people that we can't choose. But in Europe and America, it should be only restricted because you are smarter than us. Fuck you, Bloomberg. 
I love this. So um, I created a hashtag a long time. Well, not a long time ago, but a while ago. Uh, philanthro colonialism is philanthro racism. Yeah. And it is very true because you don't see him trying to wield this kind of power in developed countries. Uh, yes, He's you do. Well, he tries, but it's not nearly well, tw no, tw 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 24 million to the University of Bath. That's that's not small. Well, but that's, a, that's a university. Difference. Bloomberg asked for prohibition in Latin America and the countries under development. And he asked for high restrictions in Europe and US USA. So there is a difference. There is a huge difference. Yeah. Is we it, are... I, we are we are a lower grade of humans because we are stupid. We eat bananas, we are in the trees, and we can't vape. I, I'm kind of liking him better than I like you. I better, love you know Ignacio. I, mean. <laughs> I love him. He's my new friend. I Almost as much he as says, Edith. <laughs> he says the same things I do. Louder. He has just want to say something. Just want to say something that had nothing to do with what we are talking, but it has something to do with with a question that you read that was from Francisco. That Francisco is Francisco Ordonez. He is the president of Asobeid Colombia, that was the first association created in Latin America. And he goes through the rest of the country. He helped me a lot to create the second one. And then we go together to create the other association and we have been, uh, but he was the first stone in Latin America. So I just wanted you to know that the guy that made the comment is uh, a guy that have made a lot for vaping in the world. He won the uh, prize, how do you say, the trophy of the most important advocate last year that Inco gives its year. So I just want to raise his name because he's not very good English speaker. Uh, so Neither that's why I. he couldn't came. That's why he couldn't came, but he's a great person. He have done a lot. He is also the president of ARDT. Um, a big hug from the distance and keep it up because he have done a lot, a lot. Well, I we live in South Texas, that. so my Spanish is very small, but um, I can hear, I can listen to Spanish and understand what's going on. I can't, my mouth doesn't work right to actually speak it properly. So I, Same I speak Same happened to Francisco now. Tex-Mex. You can... He can he can understand uh, very well the English, but he is not a very good speaker. He will he he need to take a course um, a lesson. We'll just, of we'll just get in a we'll computer. get into a, a Skype and we'll just chat back and forth until we learn from each other. That's a good idea. Because I, I I work in healthcare in South Texas, and a lot of my patients are Spanish only speakers. So I have to learn. <laughs> I have to learn. Um, we have approximately seven minutes, guys. Um, I'm giving everybody a few minutes to talk about whatever it is that they want to talk about. Um, I see that Logan is on screen with Kevin. Everybody say hello to the little, the little munchkin. Hi, Logan. Hola, como esta, Logan? Don't smoke will, or don't vape. I have talked a lot, so I will just say thank you for inviting us. Uh, it was a pleasure to be here. It's so sad that the time runs so fast because these topics are amazing oh. and we could be talking for Ign hours and hours. Ignacio, I do my show every Friday night and we go three to four hours. So you can come anytime you want. I will gladly accept a new invitation and I will and gladly take you any, to our... Any advocate from Central and South America that wants to come on will figure out a way, even if there's a language barrier. Okay, we will. And we will see how to take you to vaping and not smoking programs. We also stream on Fridays, but at 6 p.m. of Chile. So 
they will not go one on the other, but it was a pleasure to be here. And now I give the last minutes to the others because I talk a lot. Jeffrey. Well, it's always a pleasure to see you guys. You know, I'm kind of a loyal watcher of your show. I really like it so, and I do enjoy it. And um, just want to raise awareness of this, the importance of this kind of things like scope. Um, when it comes to social media, we know that we have a few difficulties, uh, for example, that we cannot pay for reach. So it is really important the organic reach that we have. These kind of events that actually have so much relevance and it can actually break the bubble a little bit, you know, try to take the message out of our echo chamber. Uh, it is really important for us to do this kind of things. It's really important for us to engage in social media, in Facebook, in Twitter, in Instagram, anything that you can. Um, at the end, it's just a matter of trying to deliver the message as much as possible to the bigger number of people as, uh, that it can be done, right? Um, since I'm kind of on a communication and social media side, I usually tend to be a little partial about that. And, uh, but I do really think that, um, you know, it works in our favor at the end that uh, we have so many and passionate people that are willing to go the extra mile, that are willing to put an effort and that is not paid. <laughs> that is uh, just by the kindness of their heart and their willingness to help the others actually. And, 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 and the will to save lives at the end, that is kind of an important thing. And, pretty much what it motivates uh, the whole community. Uh, they're really great people in our community. Uh, they're loyal uh, advocates, you know, for example, the people from the Safer Nicotine Wiki, Kevin, Patrick, uh, you know, from the Latin American side, we have a bunch of people that are really dedicated to this stuff. And I hope that we can, you know, keep fighting uh, at the end. We know that it's not, that it's gonna win, that we are gonna win. Uh, what we're doing here is trying to save as much as people as possible and the earliest way that we can. So cheers to you guys. Thank you very much for the space, Kevin and Patrick, for putting this together and really looking forward to continue watching Scope. H, make it quick. We got three minutes. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll make it quick then. Uh, first of all, thank you, Ke thank you, Patrick and Kevin, for having me and us on the show. Huge shout out to Nancy Lucas and all the team at CAFRA for, for putting this, this event together. This, this is just brilliant. Um, yeah. Uh, and I don't think anybody needs to be too concerned that there's, you know, not vast numbers of people watching us live. All these shows are being repeated. They're going to be aired over and over and over again. All the good bits are going to be put out there. We will break out of the echo show. We must. We will. Um, but you can see it at, even on the floor of COP9, which we can't see, but from what we understand, the rot has started to, to set in. There's a number of countries who are going, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Hold on. We're a democracy. You're not. Why are we sending our people there? We don't even know what they're saying. Their time is coming. They're in irrelevance. They, they should have done a good job. They haven't. They've gone completely off track. So... It's events like this which really highlight this. Look at it. We, we, we're here. We have hundreds of consumers, um, advocates from around the world sharing information openly, transparently. Everything's free to share. That's what's supposed to happen in the United Nations Conference of Parties. That's what's supposed to happen. If you look at COP26, was it 26, the environment, the, the biggest delegation there is from the fossil fuel industry. Now, some people are go, oh, my God, but how are you going to solve it if you don't have all the people sitting around the table? You can't. You absolutely can't. So here we are uh, coming to the end of our hour. And again, thank you very much. I just want to point out that while we've been talking here about very serious, life-saving, important public social health issues, FCTC has earned another $12,708 to screw us. And Kevin, 30 seconds. All I know is that I'm proud of the people that are here. I know we're accomplishing more in the past three days than COP9 has accomplished in the past 20, 22 years or 18 years or whatever it was since 2005. And they haven't got one answer, zero progress. 
and we're still rolling. Go ahead. Uh, I just want to say thank you guys for coming. Um, like I said, you guys can always come back to our show on Friday nights. Uh, love you guys. Uh, Marawa is uh, is waiting. So uh, y'all have good uh, good night and listen to Marawa. Good night. Marawa. I love her. Listen to science, not Michael Bloomberg. <laughs>